annual meeting will be held on Sunday, February the 28th at 1 o'clock p.m. by Zoom video conference. Annual reports will be sent through e-newsletter and will be available on the website by Sunday, February 21st. If you know of somebody that does not use technology, please let us know and we can send them a hard copy of the report and the call-in information for the meeting. To receive the link to the video conference, you can click on the button that is in the e-newsletter to register for the annual meeting, or you can contact Christopher in the church office. Lenten packages have been delivered to children, youth, and adults who had previously expressed interest in receiving them. If anyone would like a Lenten devotional package, please let me know and it will either be delivered or available for you to pick it up. If there's any interest in a Lenten study through Zoom, please contact me and I will give you more information. Did you know that St. David's is hosting a Sunday Zoom coffee and conversation time at 10 a.m. before the Sunday morning virtual service? You can join us any Sunday by contacting the office and getting the link. Grab a cup of coffee or tea and have a chance to visit virtually with your church family. All ages are welcome to join us. It's a great way to start your week. Children are invited to join our children's program on Zoom on Sunday mornings at 11 a.m. If you're interested in the link, please contact me and I will send the link for the Zoom meeting along to you. There is a youth Zoom gathering planned for Tuesday, February the 23rd. 7 p.m. is for middle and high school. 8 p.m. is for university, college, and young adults up to age 25. If you're interested in the link to join our gathering, please contact me at 977-0005. You can text or call. Do you like a hot cup of java in the morning and fresh baked cookies out of the oven? then we have the perfect fundraiser for you. St. David's is taking orders for Java Moose coffee in ground, coffee bean, or K-cup, and three pound tubs of Mrs. Dunster's frozen cookie dough. All coffee and cookie dough are $10 a piece. Java Moose coffee comes available in Foghorn, SWP Decaf, Bay of Fundy, Cookies and Cream, Cocoa Mocha Nut, vanilla buttercream, butter rum fudge, and Canadian maple. Mrs. Dunster's cookie dough is available in chocolate chip, rainbow, ginger snap, oatmeal, double chip, and shortbread. If you would like to place an order, you can email your order to stdavidsunited at gmail.com. That's S-A-I-N-T-D-A-V-I-D-S. U-N-I-T-E-D at gmail.com. Please be specific in your order. Payment can be sent by check or e-transfer. All orders are due by no later than Sunday, February 28th, with orders set to arrive in mid-March. So don't delay and order your cookies and coffee today. If you or someone you know does not have access to our online worship services, we do have a phone line created. It's 847-0819. You can call any time of the day or evening and hear a recorded worship service over the phone. Please spread the word to those in our congregation who may not receive our emails or may not have technology to worship with us online. The shed is nearly full and we're planning our next bottle drive on March 20th and 21st. If you have redeemable bottles, those are bottles that you've paid a deposit on, you can leave them at the shed at the back of the church parking lot or give the office a call and we can arrange a curbside, contact-free pickup. Our prayer conference calls continue on Tuesday mornings at 10 a.m. If you haven't joined us in the past and would like to join us for a time of conversation and prayer, you can contact me for the information for the phone number for the call, or you can find it in the email announcements. In a year where we are feeling adrift, this Lenten season we are called to tether together and put our hope in our one true anchor. Throughout this Lenten season, we will be displaying our anchor of hope and invite you to help it reach new depths. For each contribution received, we will add a link to our chain with your name attached as a visual reminder how our connection continues to grow 
even though we are currently separated. Donations can be any amount and sent by mail or by e-transfer up until Easter Sunday. If you're not sure how much to give, you could consider a loony or, or toony a day for the 40 days of Lent or any amount of your choosing. So join us this Lent in extending our chain and becoming anchored in hope. Good morning. On this second Sunday of Lent, I welcome you to our virtual worship today. And as we prepare to worship together while apart, allow your space to become worship space at this time. Today is the second Sunday of Lent, and these 40 days are like no other, a time of reflection when we are invited to take stock of our lives. Jesus did this so many times by going to the wilderness to pray, going out in a boat to escape the crowds and demands of his life, and going to the mountain with his friends to reevaluate his life and prepare himself for what was ahead. Jesus' life provides that perfect backdrop for us in this time of reflection because all the things that he felt and did are part of our lives too. When we feel down or discouraged, we know that he too experienced these times. When we feel angry or already feeling like we need comfort, knowing that Jesus has already been there ahead of us, we come this Lent anchored in hope. Light and warmth are represented in the light that glows from this flame. May the symbol of this lit candle remind us of the reality of the light and warmth of our presence with God. Our opening song today is Shout to the Lord. Shout 
Sunday of Lent, we come seeking God. In this time of uncertainty in our lives, we come seeking God, quieting our minds, opening our hearts, and waiting for the divine to make itself known. We come to worship God, anchored in hope. Abraham and Sarah heard God's surprising joyful word. God would give them land and more, children they had long hoped for. God, you were faithful. God, you are faithful. God, you are faithful. God of Abraham and Sarah, God of us all throughout the ages, you have called people to journey in faithfulness along the Lenten way. Give us a sense of adventure, even in this Lenten season, that we may move toward the new life of Easter with confidence and hope. We pray in Jesus' name, who is our companion and guide. Amen. God, you are faithful. God, you are faithful. God, you are faithful. Your covenant is love. I want you to think for a moment today about the following question. Has anyone ever promised to give you something or promised to do something for you? And if so, did you ever have to wait a long time before the promise came true? Today in the Old Testament reading that we're going to hear, this happened to a man called Abraham. He lived many years ago. We call Abraham the father of our faith. We call him this because God made him a promise. 
God promised Abraham that he would have many children, many grandchildren, and many, many great-grandchildren. This week, I want you to remember to have faith and trust in God. God promises that if we trust in God's promises, that God will help us get through life with joy and peace in our hearts. Our scripture reading this morning comes from the 17th chapter of Genesis, beginning at the first verse. When Abraham was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abram and said to him, I am God Almighty. Walk before me and be blameless, and I will make my covenant between me and you, and will make you exceedingly numerous. Then Abram fell on his face, and God said to him, As for me, this is my covenant with you. You shall be the ancestor of a multitude of nations. No longer shall your name be Abram, but your name shall be Abraham. For I have made you the ancestor of a multitude of nations. I will make you exceedingly fruitful, and I will make nations of you, and kings shall come from you. I will establish my covenant between me and you and your offspring after you throughout their generations for an everlasting covenant to be God to you and to your offspring after you. God said to Abraham, As for Sarai, your wife, you shall not call her Sarai, but Sarah shall be her name. I will bless her, and moreover I will give you a son by her. I will bless her, and she shall give rise to nations. Kings of people shall come from her. This is the covenant of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. God of grace, your scriptures proclaim, one does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. So stir in us the longing to know you. This Lenten season, help us to return to you. Stir in us the longing to worship you. Stir in us the longing to serve you. This Lenten season, help us to return to you. Amen. On this second Sunday of Lent, we continue our journey. Last week, we heard of the covenant between God and Noah and talked of the covenant of promise and how God's covenant with Noah was sealed with a rainbow. And today, we hear of a new covenant, a new promise. Some things are so difficult to believe, and some things we don't want to believe. Some promises are hard to trust in, and some we wish that we had never, ever been made. Consider Abraham, this man out to us throughout the Bible as a man of faith. Consider Abraham when he was 99 years old, and his wife Sarah, aged 90. Consider them hearing someone say to them, You will conceive and you will bear a child, and through that child, you will produce many descendants. It seems a little ridiculous, almost a joke. Even when you know that someone is speaking to them, and that is God, it doesn't seem credible. Some things are difficult to believe. Even Abraham laughed when he heard God promise him a child. Even he, the man held out to as the greatest example of faith, doubted. Our reading today said that even as Abraham heard the voice of God and fell on his face before him, he laughed. He laughed and he said to himself, Will a son be born to a man of a hundred years old? 
Will Sarah bear a child at the age of 90? It's not really possible. In fact, it is a little ridiculous. So Abraham laughed. And a few days later, when finally Sarah heard the idea from the lips of the three angels, she too laughed. How often are we like Abraham and Sarah? How often do we laugh at what God has said to us? How often, despite our best intentions, do we doubt God's promises? I think it's very common. It's easy, you see, to trust God for the things that we have some control over. But it's awfully hard to trust God for the things that we don't control, for the things that we can't do anything to bring to pass ourselves. It's so easy to trust God for things that we think are possible, but hard to trust God for what we think is impossible. So we do not ask God to do the impossible, or if we do, we really do not expect God to be able to do it. Instead, we look for God to do those things and to bless those things which already lie within our comprehension. That's how it was with Abraham. He trusted God, and he did what he believed God wanted him to do, even when it was difficult to do so, even when he had to leave his own country and his own family. And when Abraham saw he could do something to make the divine promise come true, he did that as well. You see, from the very beginning of Abraham's faith journey, he believed that God was going to give him a son. And through that child's children and their children and their children in turn, that God was going to bless the world and that God was going to make the name of Abraham great. From the very beginning of the journey, Abraham believed in the promises of God and he trusted God for almost everything. Abraham was a man of great faith. But for all that, Abraham, like so many of us, trusted God more easily when he could see how God was going to do what God had promised to do. That is not a crime. It's simply how it is. Like Abraham and Sarah, we believe in God. And like them, we tend to laugh at the idea that God will do anything out of the ordinary. Like them, we tend to rely on our own understanding of how things work rather than on the wisdom of God. Like them, we sincerely endeavor to trust in God, and like them, we all too often leave God out of our equations because we do not see how God can make a difference to them. Abraham fell on his face and laughed and said to himself, Will a child be born to this man of a hundred years old, and will Sarah bear this child at the age of ninety? How are those questions different from the ones we so often ask? How are they different than the statements that we often make? I can't do that. I'm not strong enough. I'm not wise enough. I'm not good enough. Where is God in our equations? When we say it will not work, we tried it before and no one cares. Some things are difficult to believe and some promises are hard to trust in even if you already believe in much of what God has said and already trust in so many of the other promises that God has made. The marvelous thing about Abraham and Sarah is that even though they left God out of the equation when they laughed and said to themselves that it was impossible to have a child at this late stage of their lives, even though a significant part of them doubted God, when push came to shove, a larger part of them started to trust in God's promises and believed that God had the power to do in them what God had promised to do. Some things are hard to believe, and some promises are hard to put trust in. But if we trust God anyway... If we believe in God's promises to us, despite their fantastic nature, that even if part of us laughs and part of us doubts, we will be what God has meant us to be. And God's blessings will abide with us as they did with Abraham and Sarah. 
God has promised us so much. Remember that God is in the equation, that God loves you, and God loves the world, and God wants the best. Against all, against all hope, in hope, believe. We need to put our trust in God and trust that God is with us and that God is with us on this continued journey and that with God, we are anchored in hope for our Lenten journey. Amen. The way of Lent is a path that we travel each year as a time for us to remember Jesus' journey. On that journey, he met many people, but most of all, he loved them. Not just with his words, but with his actions. Jesus taught his followers that they were to love one another as he had loved them. We are anchored in his love with hope. The ministries of St. David's continue to live our call through worship and pastoral care, through prayer and outreach. And we offer our thanks for your continued support of our church. We ask for God's blessings on the gifts received by plate, by par, and e-transfer, and for the blessings on us in our various ministries and activities. Let us take a few moments today to quiet our hearts and minds for prayer. God, we give you thanks for the example of Abraham, for those who waited in patience for your promises to come to pass, for those who lived in hope while around them it seemed to be only darkness, for those who witnessed to you when it was not considered the proper thing to do, for those who forgot their own selves in their desire to obey your commands and respond to your call upon their lives. Help us, God, to examine the level of our faith to look seriously at our resistance to consider in prayer our reluctance to give up the things of this world, to risk our reputations, our comfort, and our security for the sake of following you. We pray, God, that you would make us bold in our faith. We pray, God, for those people whose names or faces or needs are resting upon our hearts for the members of our church and community whose health is being challenged, for those whose families are facing problems, for those who have little or no faith and who seem to be lost even though your light shines around them and your word is close to hand. We pray, God, for those in our family, our church, and our community and our world that you bring to our hearts and minds this day, in this prayer. We offer our prayers to you through one who anchors us with hope. Amen. Our closing song today is Take Time to Be Holy. time to be holy, speak oft with your Lord, abide in him always, and feed on his word. Make friends of God's children, help those who are weak, forgetting in nothing he For him, whatever be tied, in joy or in sorrow, still follow the Lord, and looking to Jesus, 
still trust in his word. Take time to be holy, become in your soul. Each thought and each motive beneath his control. Thus led by the Spirit to fountains of love, you shall to be fitted for service above. As we travel this Lenten pathway, we go as people of God, anchored in hope. Go in the knowledge and love of God to tell the good news of a new covenant with God in our hearts. We will live Christ's reign of peace and justice. Christ's peace, the Creator's love, and the breath of the Holy Spirit go with us. Amen. I am walking a path of